So at this time, we'd like to begin our award presentation. Here to present the 2021 Fellow Award to Raymond Ozzie is Lotus co-founder and past CHM Fellow, Mitch Kapor. Mitch, as you've all heard tonight, was essential in the creation of Lotus Notes, investing in Ray and his company, Iris Associates, to develop the technology that would go on to transform the future of collaboration. Mitch is also a fellow of CHM, honored in 1996 for his development of Lotus 123, the first killer app for the IBM personal computer, which combines spreadsheets, charting and graphing, and basic database operations into one application. Mitch is a well-respected leader in the technology industry, an iconic entrepreneur, an investor in tech for social impact at Kapor Capital, and a champion of diversity and inclusion in the workplace with his wife, Frida, and the Kapor Foundation. So please join me in welcoming Mitch Kapor. Thank you, Daniel. It indeed is an honor for me to be a fellow of the Computer History Museum. Uh, the Fellow Award is a very special accolade. It's considered one of the highest marks of achievement in the computing field. And it's my distinct honor to be presenting this prestigious award to Ray here tonight. So please join me in welcoming Ray Ozzie. Thank you, Mitch. Hi, Ray. Hi. Um, I could not let the evening go by without telling a couple of stories. Um, <laughs> And you know, we were working on, uh, on, on spreadsheets and uh, my uh, partner and co-founder John Sachs in, uh, got you to come uh, to Lotus. And indeed we made a deal that you talked about in the, in the documentary, uh, which is you lent a hand with something we needed to do with spreadsheets and you got to do the project that was in your heart, which was Lotus Notes, which you had been thinking about since college. But as much as it was about technology, it was also about trust because none of us knew what we were getting into. I knew that we wanted to do this. I know that you and your team needed the autonomy to go off for a long period of time, far away and have many millions or tens of millions of dollars. And I trusted that you would deliver something and you trusted us and trusted me that Lotus was going to be a good partner and bring this to market. And there were many bumps and turns in the road, but I say to this day that it was that trust that we exhibited Great. that you Great. have and integrity that actually made it, it possible. I agree. Ray, your ongoing work in entrepreneurship and collaboration and communication tools help people work together to build companies products and communities. And your life's work is centered on building connections that bring people together and that have impacted so many people around the globe. So Raymond Ozzie, on behalf of the Computer History Museum, it's my honor to present to you the 2021 Fellow Award for a lifetime of work in collaborative software and software entrepreneurship. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It is truly an honor, and thank you, thank you for your kind words. I, the, the, uh, I couldn't agree more that trust was so center, uh, central to what we did. But thanks again, and um, uh, thank you to everyone at the Computer History Museum who, um, who had, who had some involvement in in uh, in picking me. It's uh, this is just a great and highly unexpected honor. And it's such a, an extraordinary group of individuals that, um, that have been named museum fellows over the years. These are my heroes. And, and so just thank you for that honor. Um, you know, bef before I say anything else, but above all else, I just wanted to thank my wife and my partner of more than 40 years, Donna Busque, for repeatedly pushing me away from what would have been an easier path and into the direction of what makes me happy, kind of encouraging me to do what she knows I feel gives my life meaning. Serial entrepreneurship is not easy on anyone. And in my case, it's meant repeatedly over the decades, risking failure 
and all that implies to everyone. Um, this girl is one of a kind, so thank you, Donna. I appreciate it. My career has been and continues to be an amazing journey, an incredible adventure. I've been blessed. In, in my early childhood, until I was about eight years old, our family lived upstairs in a two-flat above my grandparents in the heart of Chicago. As a young boy in that era, it's undeniable that I was most influenced by my grandfather and my dad. My grandfather was a first-generation immigrant. He was a skilled craftsman, a metal worker who'd learned his trade through a rigorous ap apprenticeship in Europe. And as a kid, you know, living in the same house, I would sit in his workshop in the basement and watch quietly as he worked on his side projects. Um, I used to just love watching these projects taking shape and the smell of the, the, the workshop, the, the oil and metal shavings. When you grow up, he used to say, you'll have your own workshop. Get to know your materials, get to know your tools. The more you build, the more you learn. The more you learn, the better you'll be. You know, he said it in his own way, but he was just really focused on being the best at his craft. My dad, unlike my grandfather, wasn't a tradesman. He and his partner had built a small business, which he loved. Whereas my grandfather focused on his craft, my dad was always pushing me hard, even at a young age, to answer the questions of what and why. What are you gonna do with your life? Why will it matter? Who will care? If you have a small business, will your customers remember you? Perhaps it was their, their, their immigrant attitude or a post-war growth mindset, but together their message was crystal clear. Get off your ass, become skilled with your tools and use those tools to build something that matters. Sitting here tonight, I owe a debt of gratitude to the many people under whom I apprenticed and who taught me about my materials and my tools and techniques. Uh, Jonathan Sachs, uh, Bob Frankson, both taught me about performance and the beauty of tight code. Through my friends and co-founders, Tim Halverson and Len Kaywell, who worked for him and who showed me his code, Dave Cutler, um, along with Tim and Len, uh, taught me most everything I know about structure, architectural modularity, maintainability of systems at scale, and um, intolerance for mediocrity. And I'm indebted to Ron Rivest, Charlie Kaufman, and Al Eldridge, who taught me about cryptography, about threat modeling, about the power of key management that fundamentally enabled Lotus Notes to exist, and which also fundamentally enabled Groove uh, to have a system of distributed consensus uh, as its fundamental underlying model. In addition to these craftsmen, though, there are a handful of people who've just deeply inspired me at a higher level and who have taken me to places that I just never imagined. They opened my eyes, they caused me to lose sleep. Don Bitzer and Paul Tenzar of Plato unquestionably were the first to make me realize that there's no vision and no project that's too large to be realized, even if it takes an uncomfortable degree of selling for an engineer and the occasional use of subversive tactics to keep projects alive in the face of danger. Dan Bricklin, Mitch Kapor, and Dave Weiner left an indelible impression on me in appreciating the power of tools for creativity and tools for productivity and how those tools could fundamentally transform how businesses operate and how, all, how we all work. Doug Engelbart, Ted Nelson, Irene Greif, and Tom Malone all caused me to see the bigger picture in what we were building. Um, our conversations and their writings about coordination theory, transaction cost economics, computer supported cooperative work caused me to push myself and my teams to try to realize the much deeper and broader human and macroeconomic impact of our work. I mean, most of the people who worked for me thought they were working on software, um, but these people helped me realize this was, this was about something much, much, much bigger. Finally, at a personal level, I'd just like to thank the two longtime friends who really bet on me and who really took a risk and gave me a chance not just to build, but also to grow as a person and as a leader. Um, by giving me his trust, Bill Gates gave me the chance to understand firsthand 
what it was like to catalyze business transformation at scale. I really had no idea. I, I learned a tremendous amount about leadership, about social and organizational dynamics, about people, and about change. And so, Bill, thank you for that. And perhaps above all else, I just want to thank Mitch Kapor. Uh, certainly at a base level, I owe much of my career to Mitch, who bet on me in 1983 when nobody understood what the hell I was trying to do with PCs and networks and collaboration. But far, far beyond that, he was the first individual that to me demonstrated leadership characteristics that just made me want to follow him and to emulate. We were all who worked for him drawn to the power in what he mentioned, in his trust, in his empathy, in his tendency to pay it forward, and in what he was trying to do in build a, building a diverse organization, one that genuinely fit into the community of Cambridge. Mitch, thank you for leaving your mark on me and on so many others. I know that many young people follow this event, so let this gray-haired person uh, just kind of conclude by leaving you with one thought. For good reason, it's clear that one way to affect societal change is to take direct action by tearing things down. And in so many cases today, that is exactly the right thing to do. But over the decades, I've come to believe that the act of building can be one of the purest forms of activism. Uh, as Larry Lessig said, and as you've seen in modern tech, code is law, for good or bad, right or wrong. And so one of the most powerful things that you can do to change the situation is to take direct action by building something. Do you care about social justice? Care about healthcare? Do you wanna build a more empathic enterprise? A more perfect union? A sustainable environment? Then I'd suggest that you, maybe you shouldn't waste your time rebuilding what's been built over and over or chasing taillights. Take a risk and blaze a new trail. What have you got to lose? Get off your ass, take the time to master your tools, build a team, and build something that'll change the world. It is possible. Thank you. Congratulations, Ray. It's truly an honor to celebrate you as our newest CHM Fellow.